My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. You're welcome to episode number 73 of the 120 Days to Jump Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be dealing with electric feed. Electric feed. In the previous episode, we talked about electrostatics, which means electric charge and statics. Static electric charges. Now, electric and field. If I say a football field, what comes to your mind is simply an area where football is being played. An area where the influence of football is active, which means anytime a football goes outside the field, play cannot continue. Because it is within the feed that play is allowed. If I ask somebody, what is your field of study? And the person says, chemical engineering. It means the region which that person study, the area of study of that person, the specialty of that person is basically around chemical engineering. So he has that influence. When it comes to chemical engineering. Now, that means electric field will simply be a region where the influence of electrical charge is being paid. Electric field is as a result of very magnetic or electrical charges, which means electrical charges produces electrical feed or electrical charges are responsible for electrical uh, field. An electrical charge is a property of matter that causes two bodies to attract or repair. When they are light charges, they repel. When they are on light charges, they attract. So that property of matter that makes two objects or charges to attract or repair is electrical charge. And electrical field is as a result of electrical charge, which I said earlier, and it is the property, or it is what makes an electrical charge body to experience a force. So, an electric field is a region in which an electrical, electrically charged body can feel a force. Electric field is region between charged bodies where electric force can be experienced. Or region where electrostatic induction takes place when a conductor is placed within. That is electric field. There is something called electric line of force it's or electrical electric flows. These are lines representing the direction of the electric field, which means electric field will definitely be a vector quantity. In physics, a quantity can be scalar. Or vector. For scalar quantity, magnitude is our concern. So we're not concerned whether they're about their direction. No attention is paid to direction. But when you are studying an object, both the size, magnitude, and direction is very important for you. That quantity becomes a, a vector. So electric field is a region where electric force is being felt. So electric field lines or flaws is the direction. Of this electric field. We also have what we call electric field intensity. Electric field. The electric field intensity shows how intense this electric field is. Electric field intensity is the quantity that represents the magnitude of the electric field. It is the quantity that represents the magnitude of the electric field. Now, electric field intensity is the strength of electric field at any point. So, the magnitude decreases as the distance from the location of the source increases. Electric field intensity is the quantity that represents the magnitude of the electric field. Electric field intensity is given as uh, force over charge which is electrical force over charge. 
In the previous episode, we discussed Coulomb's law. And we said that for Coulomb's law, F is equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Or you can say D squared, which is distance of separation. Now, if this is first in Coulomb's law, and we have been told that electric field is now force per unit charge. It simply means electric field intensity will be the same thing as E equals force K Q1 Q2 over R squared divided by O over Q. This is simply electric field intensity in the previous episode as well i analyzed or mentioned that the column constant k is equals one over four pi epsilon and i said that in vacuum epsilon is equals epsilon naught so for vacuum or free space the column constant is equals one over four pi epsilon naught so this is permissivity in free space, and this is permittivity in medium. So if we are not dealing with vacuum or free space, this formula would not work because you are not dealing with epsilon naught. So what do you do? For a medium, you say permissivity or relative permittivity is equals permittivity in medium over permittivity in free space. So epsilon naught or permissivity in free space or in vacuum is constant. So if you are given the permissivity of the medium, which means you have to divide the permissivity of the medium by the permissivity in free space to give you this value of k. Otherwise, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. You probably understand that when we are dealing with calculation. From Coulomb's law, f is equals q1 q2 over r squared. So we can also represent this as big Q over small Q. It's, it's simply a way to say that two different charges. So from here, it will be easier for us to do this division and say electric field intensity is force per unit charge. And this is force. So dividing this by charge, one of the charges will be cancelled out, leaving us with KQ over R squared. And we know that K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon. As such, we simply say E is equals Q over 4 pi epsilon R squared. So this is our simplified formula for electric field intensity. Let's put that here for reference or for future calculation. Q over 4 pi epsilon R squared. So uh, in summary, if you are given a force, this full value of the force, we divide it by charge. You're definitely getting electric field intensity, and I do hope that makes sense to you. Electric potential is the potential energy per charge. It is the work done per charge from infinity to the electric field. Electric potential is the amount of work done needed to move a unit charge from a reference point to a specific point against an electric field. When an object is moved against the field, it gains some amount of energy, which is defined as the electric potential energy. So electric potential energy is defined as the total energy a unit charge will possess if located at any point in the outer space. And electric potential energy is re re represented by V. So V will be Q over 4 pi epsilon arrow. Look at it. Electric potential energy is V, which is voltage, is equals Q over 4 pi epsilon R, which is simply a way of saying that electric field intensity times the distance it will cover is electric potential. So when you multiply electric field intensity by R, like by a distance, you're definitely going to get the electric potential. Magnetic flux. The magnetic flux is simply the amount of magnetic field B which travels perpendicularly 
to an area. Magnetic law is the amount of magnetic field which travels perpendicularly to an area. So flux is equal to BA or the magnetic field is equal to flux divided by area. Electric laws will be the electric field strength or the electric field intensity multiplied by area. So this will be for electric flaws, this will be for magnetic laws, electric potential, and electric field. So far, so good. Energy stored in electric field. Energy is 1 over 2 uh, Q0 times V0. Charge uh, V is equals 1 over 2 epsilon naught E squared A D. Why the energy density is 1 over 2 E naught E squared. So take note of all this. And generally, take note of all this. I wrote them down. Maybe you want to write them out. Number one, the flaws through an area perpendicular to the lines of force is E times A. Electric flaws is electric field times area. So E A, that is simply the flaws through an area. Now this area is perpendicular to the lines of force. Perpendicular means it is at 90 degrees. 90 degrees to the line of force. That is E times A. And the second thing you should note is that total flaws through a surface or the next outward flaws through a closed surface is charge over permissivity. Total flaws through a surface or the net outward flaws through a closed surface enclosing a point charge is the charge divided by permissivity. And the third thing you should, know, you should note is that the total normal flaws through a closed surface due to any charge not enclosed by the surface is zero. So if you have a closed surface and this charge is not enclosed by the surface, that total normal charge through the surface is zero. And four, flaws in charge plane conductor. This should be flaws. When you have a charge plane conductor, the flaws in this charge plane conductor is mostly concentrated at a highly charged point. So the flaws EA per area is simply the surface density over the electric field intensity. So for a charge plane conductor, the flux is concentrated at the highly charged point where you have the most charge. And it is simply the surface density over electric field intensity. Now let's look at the direction of electric charges. Remember, when we are dealing with charges, we boldly agreed in the last in the last episode that like charges repel, while unlike charges attract. Like charges repel, while unlike charges attract. If you are given something like this, something like this, this is positive, and this is positive. What do you think will happen here? It will repair, meaning here it will move away. They are not going to attract. Only unlike charges attract. How about something like this? Okay, now, still dealing with direction of electric field. So if here is plus Q and here is a point P, if this point is positive, definitely there will be repulsion. So the electric field will move this way to repair this positive charge. Now, if this is negative charge, and at this point P, if here is positive, what will happen? There will be attraction. The field will move this way to attract this charge. Now, how about you have something like this? Here is a point P. Here is positively charged plus Q1. Here is negatively charged minus Q2. So what do you think will happen? If this P here, this point is positive, for here, there will be attraction. The field will move towards here. Attraction. Now here is positive, here is positive, they will repair. So there's no way it's going here, it's going to repair to move opposite the charge. So here will be attraction, here will be repulsion. Anytime you have plus plus together, 
defeat the move opposite, like they will repair. They will try to run away from the same charge. When you have two charges plus minus, they will try to run towards each other. That is the basic idea. However, you have something like this. Here is negative charge. Here is negative charge. Here is point here, P. And this point is positively charged. Don't you think two things will happen? At here, S. So here we we'll try to attract this. And here we we'll also try to attract this. So they are opposite charges. Now let's see that the characteristics of the electric lines of force. The characters of the lines of force. Okay. We are going to be ending electric feed or with this. Then in the next episode, we'll look at questions under electrostatics and electric feed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now looking at the characteristics of forces on charges in electric feed. So these forces that act on charges in electric feed, what are their characteristics? What are their properties? What should you see or observe and say that, wow, this is a typical character of forces on charges in electric field? The first is, the forces on charges in electric field are exerted on charges at rest or in motion. So whether a charge is at rest or in motion, these forces are always there. They are exerted. But here comes the difference. When the charges are at rest, the forces exerted are basically electric forces or electrostatic forces. So for charges at rest, electrostatics or electric forces are the forces experienced. Now, if these charges are moving or they are in motion, the forces that will be exerted will basically be electric forces and magnetic forces together. Electric and magnetic forces together are exerted on charges in motion. But for charges at rest, it is purely electric or electrostatic force. And the second thing you should know about forces on charges in electric field is that they are exerted in the same direction with the field. Which means any direction the field goes, that is where the force goes. So the force and the field, they move in the same direction. And they deflect charges and change the speed or kinetic energy of charges. So these forces on charges can deflect certain charges, make them to drift, or they can change the speed of these charges. Speed is also the kinetic energy. Remember, mechanic energy or mechanical energy is the energy a body possesses due to height or due to motion. It is mechanical energy that is divided into kinetic energy and potential energy. Potential energy is the energy a body possesses due to height or by virtue of its height. That is MGH, the mass, the gravity, and the height. Why kinetic energy is the energy an object possesses due to motion. When you are moving, you possess kinetic energy. That is half mv squared. Your velocity is being squared. Now, another characteristic or character of forces on charges in electric field is that the deflection depends on force exerted, the applied voltage, and the speed of charge. So the force or the deflection, remember I said deflection is possible. So these forces, they can deflect charges or change the speed. So this deflection, what are the factors that depend or determine how these charges will deflect? We are simply saying that the factors that affect this deflection are one, the force that is exerted, the applied voltage, and the speed of charge. That is what determines the deflection. An electric field increases with applied voltage and deflection and decreases with velocity. So when applied voltage increases, electric field will increase. When deflection increases, electric field will increase. But when the velocity increases, the electric field will reduce. This is why the electric field is proportional to VD or voltage deflection all over velocity. Directly proportional to voltage and deflection and inversely proportional to velocity. And finally, 
The forces on charges in electric field can be attractive or repulsive. Attractive is when these forces or these charges are like charges, the same charges they attract. When they are unlike charges, they repair. If you miss the note, you can it's a video. You can basically go back or pause and write them out. So I basically don't need to wait for you to copy. If it were one on one class, I will wait. But this is a video. You can always pause, go back, even start from the beginning. So now look at one of the properties of the electric force or lines of force. They always radiate from the positive charge. If this is a positive charge, the forces will always radiate out from the positive charge like this. You see like this the radiate as you can see here isolated positive charge the forces they go out of positive charge now for negative charge they suck in they go like this into the negative charge like this like this like this so they suck into negative charge and they radiate out of positive charge these are for isolated positive charge isolated negative charge now, a situation where you have unlike charges, if you have unlike charges plus here yeah, and minus, they will attract. So, you see that they radiate out of the positive. They go out of the positive to attract the negative, like this, like this. So, these are attractive forces. Unlike charges, they attract. Now, if you are to be like charges, like, let's say positive positive instead of attracting they will repair this will say get out get out don't near me don't near me no 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 you see don't near me they repair so they repair so these are two like charges repelling on like charges will attract i hope you found this interesting please get your flash learner job application and practice more questions and tell your friends and family to subscribe to this channel if you find it helpful and see you in the next episode we shall be looking at calculations take care of yourself